This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So I just finished watching the Super Mario Bros. movie, and I gotta say, as a massive Mario fan, this was one of my favorite movies that I've ever seen. Now, of course, I'm gonna be super biased. It should be known that, you know, going into this video, I'm a Mario channel, I've been a huge Mario fan for a long time, and this movie is quite literally catering to me in every single way possible. The whole time I was watching this, the Mario Bros. movie, there was just a, a big dumb smile on my face. Like, quite literally the whole time. Like, I know people say, say that as a bit of, you know, hyperbole, but no, I'm not even kidding, just everything about this movie was was just so joyous and fun. And despite it having a little bit of a, a more basic plot, I do think maybe that is something that they could work on or Nintendo could work on in their, their upcoming movies. It was still so freaking awesome. If you like Mario at all, if you want a TLDR, no spoilers, go watch the movie. So since this is more off the cuff, I actually was taking notes as I was watching it. So I've got a rough plot summary and basically I'm just going to kind of talk about the plot, the characters, and then everything else that, you know, the movie contains. So this movie starts off as the first trailer starts off. Bowser comes into some sort of ice kingdom. Bowser has been trying to get all the stars in this mushroom kingdom. So that's the first thing that happens. And then we basically cut to Mario and he's not actually working for Spike, but he actually, him and Luigi start their own company, which is where we get that awesome Super Mario Bros. plumbing commercial that we've all seen. And they end up really messing up their first customer's order to say the least. We get actually a really fun nod in this scene to where uh, Luigi hands a wrench to Mario and the way it's all shot is actually very similar to the scene from the original Super Mario Bros. movie where Luigi's handing a wrench to Mario while he's, you know, fixing everything and Luigi's just holding the tools. But anyway, Mario and Luigi go home after after their, their failure that they had, they're greeted by their family. Yes, they all live with their family. We see Mario's dad, his mom, he's got siblings and stuff. It's really, really charming. His family is not really keen on them starting their own business. They kind of think it's like a stupid thing that he's doing because he had a stable job with, with Spike's plumbing, right? So later that night, Mario and Luigi are watching some TV. Then Mayor Pauline, she's the, the, the mayor of Brooklyn, New York. She basically says there's a huge plumbing problem. It's, it's breaking news. So Mario and Luigi want to really prove to everyone that, you know, they're the ultimate plumbers. So they end up getting to Brooklyn, New York, and there's just water everywhere. They basically try to solve the problem, but only make things worse. And then they end up in an underground level. And underground, they find a massive green pipe. And this green pipe basically sucks them into a giant portal. This portal's so cool because you can see all sorts of other portals all over the place, which basically immediately sets up this movie to have other movies tied to it, just like, you know, Marvel Avengers. A lot of people have been wondering, well, could this movie potentially lead to a Nintendo Cinematic Universe? And because of the way the pipes are portals to different places, it absolutely could. They've immediately basically set up a premise to make multiple movies with multiple different Nintendo IPs. So at this point, Mario and Luigi are, you know, flying down this portal and they both get split up. Luigi goes to the Dark Lands, which is basically Bowser's Castle. Mario goes to Mushroom Kingdom. Then, of course, Mario's greeted by Toad. He goes to the Mushroom Kingdom to talk to Peach. And that's where we find out that Peach is kind of a badass. And I, I saw a lot of people complaining about how they wish Daisy was in the movie and she was kind of the badass. But honestly, I think Peach being like a really tough leader is way more interesting than her just being the damsel in distress. If they want to put Daisy in a future Mario movie, they could just make her extra sassy or something because Peach... Peach really is just like a big strong leader, right? She's not really like a, a tomboy or anything. But yeah, Luigi is basically trapped in Bowser's kingdom and Bowser is headed towards Peach's kingdom because Bowser's proposal here is that he's gonna force Peach to marry her so that he can both rule the world with the Power Star. And I will say there's a little bit of a weird plot hole at the end of this movie that makes his, his purpose kind of meaningless. But alas, that's basically his plan. You know, Bowser is, is kind of a big dunce. You know, Jack Black, you know, everyone knows Jack Black plays as Bowser. Honestly, the, the dude just really pushes the movie to like the next level. Uh, I mean, there's not even really a song number in this movie. There is a couple of parts where Bowser's playing piano and singing about Peach, which is really funny and charming, but it never turns into like an over the top song number like you would expect from, movie, from a movie like this. That, just doesn't really happen. So while that's going on, Mario wants to prove to Peach that he can help her, you know, save the kingdom from Bowser since he's coming. So Mario has to go through this obstacle course and he, you know, he kind of fails at it. There's a montage, he kind of gets better and better over time. He learns how the power-ups works. And the power-ups in this movie are used so ingeniously. 
like, yeah, we were kind of expecting, you know, Mushroom, Fire Flower, stuff like that to be in the movie. But the way that they're so, like, easily available really makes Mario and Peach just much more dynamic and unique, just in general. Like, Mario's flying around with a Tanuki suit, he gets the cat suit when he's fighting Donkey Kong, we'll get to that. So Mario and Peach end up talking to Cranky Kong because Cranky Kong has a big old Kong army. But they don't want to help her, they're, they're not interested in doing that at all. So Mario basically says, hey, let me fight one of your Kongs, and if I win, then we get your army to fight Bowser. So Mario ends up fighting Donkey Kong, he kind of gets his ass beat at first, of course, but then he gets his, he gets a hold of the cat suit and just destroys Donkey Kong at that point. So now that they're all teamed up and kind of together, basically they need to take a shortcut back to Mushroom Kingdom. That's where the whole Mario Kart section comes in with Rainbow Road. It's honestly a really cool way of integrating Mario Kart into the movie, and then Bowser finds out that Mario and Peach are, you know, they're kind of flirting, they're getting together, so Bowser sends out his army onto Rainbow Road, they're kind of all fighting it out, and there's this leader, there's of course the Blue Shell Koopa, and, you know, basically Mario is, is kind of like, you know, trying to avoid him, drifting around him, jumping off different parts of Rainbow Road to avoid the Koopa, and what ends up happening is Mario basically gets flown off his car, he lands inside DK's cart, and the Blue Shell Koopa turns into a Blue Shell and destroys them. Well, he destroys the road, I should say. They fall into the water, plummet to the bottom, and all and all that. And they're, they're fine, of course, but uh, I think it's really... Just, what a cool way of introducing the blue shell. So at this point, Mario and DK, they basically get trapped in an eel, and then Peach is you know, struggling to fend off against the Mushroom Kingdom. She's essentially forced, forced to marry Bowser. So while all that's happening, Bowser and DK manage to escape the eel. They, they kind of like... I won't go into too much detail about how they do it, but they manage to escape the eel, they get up to Bowser, and there's this huge fight, and, you know, while that's happening, that's when we really start to see Mario and DK integrate the power-ups, which is interesting, because only Mario and Peach are using the power-ups, but apparently DK can also use them. But I guess he wasn't originally because he was he just thought he was that strong. I guess that is a little that's that's the thing like wh who can use the, the power-ups in this movie? Who's able to use power-ups canonically? If ba if DK can use them, why isn't Bowser using power-ups? Just just saying. But anyway, they they're using the power-ups and it's really really awesome. I loved seeing, you know, Fire DK. He was a highlight on one of the trailers. And they end up making their way up. Basically Peach freezes Bowser and she ends up saving a bunch of um, servants that Bowser captured. So Bowser, of course, captures the penguins from the Ice Kingdom. He captures Luigi, the Kongs and stuff. So, you know, Peach and Mario eventually end up saving them all. And what ends up happening at that point is Bowser sends out a bonsai bill. And this thing's about to hit the Mushroom Kingdom, but Mario manages to basically get the Bonsai Bill's attention and then lead him back to the green pipe where he came from. The Bonsai Bill goes into the green pipe, and this is where things get really a little bit confusing, I will say. Probably the most confusing part of the movie. But the Bonsai Bill goes into the pipe, the portal explodes. I don't know why it explodes, but it explodes from the Bonsai Bill, and everything kind of gets meshed together. All the Mushroom Kingdom characters, and even like Bowser's castle gets sucked into the real world. And then from there, Mario gets a hold of the Power Star, which is literally just stars. So I don't know why Bowser didn't just use this. I mean, who knows? Anyway, Mario and Luigi end up both getting the star and they just beat the ever living crap out of Bowser. And at that point, you know, Bowser's pretty destroyed. They force feed him a mini mushroom and he's trapped in a cage. That is basically how the movie ends. There is, of course, a post-credit scene, as a lot of movies do nowadays. And the post-credit is simply a Yoshi egg opening, and we hear a little Yoshi, you know, at the very end. So I'm guessing we're just going to get a direct sequel to the Mario Bros. movie. That's what's so fascinating about this Mario Bros. movie being such a huge thing, and what I, I'm guessing is going to be a massive success, is the simple fact that it's really hard to predict like what movie they're gonna make next. Like they could definitely make a direct sequel to Mario Bros. movie and then maybe do some spin-offs, a DK movie, a Zelda, a Metroid, you know, who knows? They could really go in so many directions. So if you're interested in like a, a deep complex story, you're not gonna get that here. And I'm not one of those people that says, oh, it's a kid's movie. Kids movies can't have complex and deep meaningful stories because that's definitely not true. A lot of them, a lot of them do. Uh, this movie doesn't really, and honestly, I don't really care at all, personally. <laughs> Just because, you know, it, it's a Mario movie. It's so much better than any other video game movie I've ever seen. Look, I liked Sonic 1 and 2. I thought those, both those movies were fun, especially the second one. That one was, was pretty decent. 
But this movie just absolutely blows it out of the w water, just in every way. It's the world building, the characters are more interesting. I actually feel like I'm watching a Mario movie and it's not Sonic trapped in a real world movie. It's just, it's so much better. If I had to pinpoint my favorite part of the movie, it probably has to be the animation itself because everything is just so fluid and fun to watch. And there's, there's so many little tiny details everywhere referencing old games. We get a line from Diddy Kong. There's ice climber stuff everywhere. There's a, a punch out pizzeria place. I mean, there's references all over the place. I mean, if, if I were to like go through and analyze the movie, it would take me probably several hours to find every single reference. And I'd probably miss some because it's just crammed full of them. But the fact is, is that it doesn't necessarily feel like it's forced in. All the references from this movie basically is, is just building the world together. And I haven't even talked about just how it looks. Like the art style is amazing. At first, I didn't really know how I felt about it. I thought Mario just looked kind of weird, but I really got used to it. And e even like the voice cast, I got super used to. You know, Chris Pratt honestly did a pretty good job. There was a few moments where he attempted an actual Mario voice, which was great. Everyone else's characters were, were fantastic, you know. Jack Black, definitely the highlight. Even Toad wasn't annoying. I was expecting to get annoyed by Toad, or I guess technically Captain Toad. But um, no, not really. Like actually Captain Toad wasn't in the movie that much. We didn't even see that many Toads in general. Like we saw obviously a lot of Mario and Luigi, a lot of screen time for Bowser and a good amount of screen time for even just Peach, too. Then, of course, there is the music. I was pleasantly surprised with the music. Again, literally every song they picked is like some of my favorite music of all time. So much 80s music. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of 80s music. We got some Aha, Take On Me, Thunderstruck at some point. There was a lot of great stuff. Uh, we also got a lot of really um, great renditions of Mario music. Immediately as Bowser's coming into the Ice Kingdom, we get a rendition of the airship from Super Mario Bros. 3. I mean, like, once I heard that, this is like, what, 20 seconds into the movie, I immediately knew this movie was gonna be awesome. Even Bowser's Fury which was in this, was in here, which is so cool. It was a scene where we really get introduced to Bowser and his army. Here, da -na 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 -na. I was not expecting to just straight up hear that. The DK rap is in this, which unfortunately, Grant Kirkhope wasn't credited in the credits for that. I'm hoping that in the DVD release, they'll add his name to the credits. DK was awesome too. We actually didn't see that much of Donkey Kong. You know, we did get some Seth Rogen laughs, of course. Yeah, no, we really didn't see that much of Donkey Kong. Like Donkey Kong is kind of like Mario's rival, but I mean, we don't start seeing the Kongs until like halfway into the movie. So he doesn't get as much screen time as you would expect. But I think there I'll go ahead and wrap things up. This movie was, like, I, like I've said like a thousand times, just such a pleasure to watch. Oh, and uh, before we end things, I gotta talk about Squarespace, which is today's sponsor. I'm sure you've heard of Squarespace before. They're the best and most powerful place to create the slickest websites. You can connect your audience and generate revenue through members-only content, manage members, send emails, and leverage audience insight, all on one easy-to-use platform. You can make a community on your website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and and likes. Use their blogging to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. And that's not even including Squarespace Extensions, a new third-party tool that lets you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Nathaniel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Links in the description. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and um, gonna go clean my uh, question mark tin. I'm really glad they didn't run out of these. I'm really glad to have one of these. This is a super cool tin. Check that out. Epic.